Our next story is about a place we hope never closes down, never goes out of style. The main library here downtown is an impressive building, but as Patrick Murphy shows us, it's not just a place that's filled with books. It's a place that's filled with surprises. In the years following the 1904 World's Fair, St. Louis was self-confident and progressive. Inspired by the City Beautiful movement, it embarked on plans to widen the streets, build plazas and malls, and erect great public buildings. In the heart of downtown, an entire city block was raised to make room for a magnificent palace of learning, a central city library that would attest to St. Louis's dedication to making the collected wisdom of mankind available to every citizen. Cass Gilbert was one of the most renowned architects of the early 20th century. After designing the Palace of Fine Arts for the World's Fair, he accepted the commission for the new library. Later, he would design the Woolworth Building in New York and the United States Supreme Court. When the new Central Library was dedicated in January of 1912, it was one of the finest public buildings in America. Tucked away beyond its grand hall and elaborately decorated reading rooms are other places housing special collections that make this library one of the most extraordinary in the United States. It's called the Stedman Since 1930, this small wood-paneled room has housed the George Fox Stedman Architectural Library. Stedman was a wealthy St. Louis businessman with a passion for collecting rare architectural manuscripts. The purpose is to show the architects of St. Louis the great works of architectural history so that they would be have access to them and be inspired to do great work in St. Louis. The collection's oldest work is an edition published in Rome in 1521. 19th century Victorian designers referred to this catalog of ornamental patterns for inspiration. The German exhibit at the World's Fair is documented in this book and this 1925 critique explores the work of a controversial American architect Frank Lloyd Wright. The value of the collection is in, in the fact that we have most of the seminal works in architectural publishing in either the original or very early editions. And local architects, architectural students, architectural historians can come and see the works in their original format and see how the buildings were supposed to look or read the manifestos or the rules in their original format. The St. Louis Public Library has been collecting maps since 1866. Many of its 130,000 plus sheets provide pictures of St. Louis's earliest days. So this is a map of St. Louis in 1824 when it only went out to 3rd Street. Most of what you see on here is under the arch grounds right now. Here are the Indian mounds that most people have heard of. There's the Great Mound. They destroyed those in the 1850s for fill, I guess. They didn't excavate them, more's the pity. There are maps of Forest Park, created before it was officially opened. The R.E. Lee at the bottom of this map stands for the Robert E. Lee, who worked with the Army Corps of Engineers to keep the Mississippi Channel from drifting to the Illinois side. I'm as interested in history and geography as the next guy, and these snapshot a place at a time and they tell me all kinds of things that, that would be tedious to read in print. They are fun to look at, especially if you know your history. Here we have a box of municipal theater programs. Uh, we have one in this box that dates from the first year the Muni was in operation, 1919. Tom Pearson in Special Collections works with everything from rare St. Louis memorabilia to 4,000-year-old cuneiform tablets. We also have a number of very old Bibles, including this, which is a King James Bible that dates from the year 1611. And a genealogy, apparently? That starts with God. Good place to start, I'd say. Even older than that, we have a, a belief from a Gutenberg Bible. Uh, this dates from the 1450s, and this is actually the second Bible that was printed in Gutenberg's workshop. A cavernous space called the Stack Tower holds most of the collection, these photographs show it under construction before 
and during the process of building the giant bookcases. Well, we're in the Stack Tower, Patrick. It's one of the most remarkable public library collections in the United States. Millions and millions of items get back here. It's actually an engineering tour de force, Triumph as, as well. These are literally seven-story high bookcases. They begin at the basement level and go without interruption all the way to the top of the building. And the floors are hung off of the bookcases. Well, I, I couldn't help but notice that these floors are made out of glass. Pretty amazing, yes. When this building was built, uh, electric light was very expensive and hard to come by. And as much light uh, as could get through the, the floors was important. Uh, when this building opened, there was one light bulb every other book stack. <laughs> so ordering a book is done in the old tried and true manner, with the help of some old 20th century technology. Your request is placed in a capsule and propelled to the proper stack by way of a pneumatic tube where someone takes the order, looks for your book, and brings it down to the front desk. As the Central Library approaches its 100th birthday, it's fun to flip through the old photo album. But to bring this remarkable building in line for the requirements of the 21st century, the library is studying ways it can best preserve and renew it while managing more than four and a half million items so it will continue to invite the people of St. Louis to explore the minds of the world's greatest thinkers.